Hello, I'm the Irish Football Fan TV. We're here at the National Football Exhibition up in Dundalk. I'm joined by the one and only Ray Houghton. Ray, uh, you're an ambassador for the Euros. Uh, what's it been like travelling around the country? It's been fantastic, to be honest, so far. Uh, we've been going for a while, you know. I think it's a good 14, 15 months or thereabouts when we first started. Been to numerous cities all around Ireland to try to promote the tournament. I mean, it's 60 years, uh, the anniversary of it. It's been going since 1960. Started off with four teams, I think. We're up to 24. Yeah. Just shows you the implosion of football around Europe and how many uh, many countries want to get involved in this. And it just gets bigger and bigger. I think it's the second biggest tournament that's watched live uh, the after Cup, after know? the World Cup number one and the Euros is number two. I think I think it's that's that's the, the facts about it. Uh, it'd be absolutely incredible. And for us, you know, to have four games here, you know, three co group stage matches and they're on the last 16, brilliant. And the first time uh, the European Championships has been taken away from one or two countries to numerous countries. So they're, so they're spreading it all around Europe and we'll see how it works. For us, great incentive. You know, for the players, you know, I think it's absolutely brilliant. The fact that you'll play, you could play if you qualify at least two games here. And in, this in exhibition Dublin. has been travelling the lengths of the country since December 2018, and it's great. It's finally made it to Dundalk, of course, a town steeped in football history. Yeah, it's great football history in the town here, and I think uh, uh, it's a great period in the club's history. And the club's very important in the region, right throughout the town and, and throughout the surrounding villages and towns. And I think uh, it's great to see. Um, it documented Irish football history, all the different great teams over the years, um, great moments in history documented. Uh, it's an interactive exhibition. It's also uh, it's great to view the jerseys and some of the stories from from all the different areas. And it's it, you know it's it's a celebration of Irish football, and uh, you know we, you know amidst. All the, there can be an element of negativity. You can't get away from the fact that it's 300,000 people play football in Ireland at all levels. It's the biggest participating sport. And when the Aviva Stadium is full and behind an Irish team, it's special. Great travelling away support. And football is very important in Ireland. And I think it's great to see all it documented in the way that has been. You mentioned about documenting all the Irish document all the past for Irish football. It also covers everything from the European Championship as well, right back to 1960. So it's great that it covers it all, particularly for younger generations. Yeah, you know, you're learning things all of the time and, and seeing, you know, so it's great great for younger generations, you know, as you say, yeah, for, for, for grandfathers and, and fathers and sons and daughters and coming in and, 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 and getting a picture of what, what it was like in different periods of history. To have this exhibition here in my hometown, it, it, it's great and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to have been part of it. Yeah, just in terms of your memories of uh, the Euros, do you want to talk us through some of the good times? Obviously, I know you've only walked to the door and you probably haven't got a chance to look at everything yet, but just bring, does it bring back memories seeing all these photos ah, yeah, and videos? Yeah, I mean, the Euros, I was there for the World Cups mainly. We, I never actually played in the Euros, oh. believe it or not. But uh, I was part of the squad just before they went out to Germany in 88 and um, that was great memories because uh, myself and Mark Kelly were left in Finstown House and if anybody had got injured I was next on the plane but I knew nobody would get injured in uh, the couple of uh, friendlies that we had prior to it so um, it was it was lovely as a young man to come back to Dundalk and see it as a fan and then in 1990, I had the privilege of playing in the World Cup, but telling all the boys what it was like back home. And they didn't really believe me until the videos came out. And uh, sure enough, when it, when the videos came out, they realised what they were doing for the country. Volume, right? First of all, OK, so it's a shinner, right? Wayne Rooney. Remember Wayne Rooney's shinner yeah. at Old Trafford? So it's the exact same. But I threw the ball to Mick because I was warming up. And I went out for a throw and I threw it, Mick threw it in, so I played my part in that goal. Well, well, I, if I didn't throw to him, it wouldn't happen. I wish we had that on video then. Looking back, the nostalgia around here is brilliant and it makes you realise, you know, uh, how fortunate we were as a team to be together and create moments, but also, you know, the people that, that we aspired to uh, to be like, you know, the people that came before us, seeing all the, all the memorabilia and... Uh, you know, the, the, the recording of the times before we got there, you know, the people who made the game what it was back in the day, because, you know, football wasn't easy in this country. You had the GAA and you had uh, 
a lot of people thinking that football was a garrison game in the early days and and so uh, it, it was a difficult journey but those those heroes that were there in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, 60s, to see them in, in glory here is brilliant because we were charged with trying to emulate them and bring the game further and without them, you know, I don't think, you know, that we, we'd have had no history, we probably wouldn't have had the team come together the way we did and we wouldn't have had the exciting times under Jack and Mick. I mean, I, I had 16 years you know, playing for, for the Ireland senior team. It's the greatest time in my life. You know, the jersey meant so much to me. But when you come here today and you see what, you know, you can feel it in, in generations before me. And uh, the bit I like the most uh, uh, about today is the colour of fan around everything that's happening. This just isn't a load of pictures of players and a load of jerseys belong to players. You see the shots here, you see the, the videos that we're looking at here, what it meant to the fans. I think the connection that we had and, and will always have between our team and fans. Uh, you know it wins awards every time we go to tournaments, you know it's very special, but I think it's, um, it's a real proof check of uh, how strong that connection is. And I, I'm feeling really good. Football starting this weekend as well. We've got the Slovakia trip coming up, uh, obviously huge importance. And this Fingers is a, crossed. Yeah, but this is a lovely sort of wetting of the appetite here in Dundalk tonight. And, uh, also on top of that, there's a couple of nice photographs of me and there's a goal that I scored being shown somewhere. So, uh, you know, for, for the old ego as well. It's Thanks not very so much for your time. Pleasure. All right, Thanks absolutely. Thanks very much for joining us an Irish football fan to be and best up the rest of the campaign. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Go catch up with your former teammates. Sorry. Yeah. Thank Have you. a look at this tournament in the summer and see how football can repay the exchequer. Well, Noel, I can't say anything more than that. Thanks very much You're for your welcome. time. All right, good Gents. to see you again. Thank you, sir.